Hello everyone. Uh, today I thought I'd take a moment and talk about a, a new 7400 MP from Crown Royal. Uh, just got this installed at my in-laws. So I still have my 7300E if you guys have watched my other videos. Um, looking forward to trying out the MP series. Uh, that way I can I mean, I, I know I can't compare like wood usage and things because it's not the exact heat load and what have you, but I'm really curious to see how this stove works out in comparison to my pristine E-Series. I know I get questions a lot on what I still go with, um, you know, the, the E-Series and I have a little bit of doubts to be honest. Um, so yeah, he. Uh, my in-laws they decided to go with MP series uh, they you know didn't want to be held up by needing dry wood and stuff with uh, like the E series uh, you know they're they're pretty sensitive to, to wet wood um, so we got this hooked up we've got this building here that we're heating and the house um, so looking inside here Uh, we we haven't put our treatment in yet uh, we actually need to run the pumps and run the loops and uh, see that make sure that we don't have any leaks from hooking up the stove I'll show you in the back here in a moment so taking a look inside here um, you can see your grates on the bottom uh, you've got this handle here and that is for your shaker grates um, I know everybody on the Facebook group has been kind of messaging and, and putting posts up. Uh, you know, everyone's starting up their furnace this time of year, first times and things. And some people are struggling to keep a fire going. And most people's recommendation is to uh, stop shaking the grate, basically. Um, you know, don't, don't shake your coals out and things like that. Maybe do it just once a week initially at the start. Um... So don't don't do this every day or anything like that. That's what people are saying. We'll we'll have to see. I'll provide more feedback on that. Uh, when you go to load, you've got bypass here, um, and it says to make sure the fan is not on um, up here. So unlike a normal wood burner where uh, you know it, it would just go out from your firebox and up to the smokestack. Uh, this actually has a double bypass up here. Uh, I'm sorry, not bypass, but uh, a double chute. So it comes up from the back, through here to the front, up there, and then out the, the chimney. Um, so you got to clean this, I think, every once in a while. I don't think it's very often based on the videos that I've seen. And then, of course, you have your ashtray down here this up I don't even know that I've had this open yet. so there you go your ashtray get this closed up got nice new and tight seals and we'll uh, we'll move on to the back here uh, so it, if anyone is watching this for the first time so that's the con it's control mix uh, it's a corrosion inhibitor uh, crown royal requires you to put that in um, it's uh, not cheap you, you get it with uh, with your stove initially and uh, you may not need to put it in anymore I don't know my my manual the crown is a couple years old says to add a little bit each year uh, so this is our panel, very simple, you can mess with your settings with this. Um, it mentions the optimal range, so this is for your, I think it's your fan speed. Um, our dealer told us to try and keep it like 2 o'clock, so it makes sense, it's right in the middle of that um, range. You've got your fan and uh, the light switch, um, but I, I don't think the power is on back there, it's not. Um, so normally this would be on fan 
and going to the back now he had an old wood burner and that's what we'll really be interested to see how much less wood we burn with this one compared to the old one um, so his old one they they both came up into the stove right in the center and crowns are a little bit different you've got pockets on each side one here one over here and just kind of the way it worked out I sent three up that way one up that way um, so with crown royals you need to cross feed them so this pump here this big pump is going to the house on the bottom left here and when it returns it's going up and to the top right and then this loop here is going to the shop it's bottom right and returns up top uh, a couple things you'll notice i installed temperature gauges on everything i like that because one, a i can kind of monitor to see um you know what what my temperature drops are um you know when when i'm really drawing on it when i've got different things going uh, so it's nice to see you don't want your return temperature to get too low so if we need to um, like like my pumps I have multi-speed uh, this Taco here is just single speed this one is multi-speed um, this is a much smaller pump because it's just going in the shop here through two he uh, heat exchangers and, and back so not much versus the house we think the old pump he had um, just wasn't quite big enough to we weren't getting enough heat to the house because we ha he has radiator heat in the house. Um, what else? Uh, so yeah, so I've got temperature gauges going in and out. Um, I put a Y strainer here. I thought that would be kind of nice before it went into the house. Uh, I wanted to put another ball valve here so I could isolate here and here on the pump in order to pull this out without draining much and i just wasn't going to have enough room and it made more sense to me to have it on you know your your feed line it didn't make sense to have it on your return line in my opinion um so i i i think here if my logic is correct you know if i isolate here and i isolate up top then um the the only water I would lose should be for instance like in this line from here all the way up to here which, which shouldn't be too much uh, so so what else from my experience so far uh, the solenoids need to keep a little I put like dielectric grease on them on both of these uh, so we gotta gotta keep them in good condition and yeah, that's, that's about that. So hopefully in the next couple weeks here we'll get a fire going uh, and start seeing what she's made of. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking to be able to, to help people and, you know, hopefully my thoughts on the differences and, you know, if I had to do it all over again, what which I would go with. Um, and... Because, of course, you know, the grass is, always seems to be kind of greener on the other side. And we talk about, you can check out my other video. Um, I have a 7300E series, pristine, totally different animal. Just totally different in its design and operations, if you ask me. Um, so, so last thing, the, the pumps, we've got them so that they both plug in here. Um, and then... The cord from the old wood burner was too short, so we plugged in a switch here so that technically we could kill switch to everything here. Uh, so, so once you you know flip that on, you've got power to your stove, and we'll plug these in, and that'll get the pumps going. And yeah, so uh, oh, and one more thing, so we've got our webstone valve here. Um, like I've got this on mine, and this is where I end up taking my water sample from. Um, so that that's kind of convenient to have and um, you I mean of course you can fill from the top of the stove you can always hook up a hose there and fill it if you wanted to uh, so we got it full of water we're gonna run it uh, run the pumps make sure we don't have any leaks before we put our control in 
and then uh, I think we'll we'll put the control in, send in the water sample, and uh, hopefully get you guys an, another video in the coming weeks here of it running, and and start doing some videos on this. So if you guys have any questions uh, preemptively that I can, you know, hit up uh, as, as we run it, then I can answer in my next video certainly. Uh, Leave a comment, uh, give me a thumbs up, something, and subscribe if you are looking forward to or wanting to see uh, some of the other videos that I'll have on this. So, you all have a good day.